Welcome to On the Fringe, the webcast that brings you the latest golf news from the PGA, LPGA, Champions, and Nationwide Tours. Join PGA teaching professional and Nationwide Tour winner Vic Wilk. Joining Vic is former collegiate player and teacher Mike Preisler. Also at the tee box is veteran sports broadcaster and high handicapper, yours truly, Ron G. Man Gerard. You are On the Fringe. Vic, what's happening, pal? Man, I tell you what, I'm still trying to get over the buzz of this last week. What a Masters. Masters was unbelievable. I think it's probably the most exciting Masters uh, that I've seen in, uh, gosh, forever, maybe since uh, the Nicholas one of 86. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Uh, you know, that was an exciting back nine. I didn't know who was going to win this thing. Um, you were with Sky Sports this last week uh, doing this whole uh, broadcast in 3D. What Did you have a chance to look at this stuff in 3D? What I was... sure did. It was fantastic. I mean, you can really see the undulations in the greens, the, the slopes everywhere. Uh, watching golf in 3D is really special. It, it, at one point in time, they had a camera shot where a guy hit a shot, and it looked like the divot came right out of the screen at you. <laughs> well, what I want to try to do, uh, Butch, is to uh, wear those glasses when I go out and play golf. Maybe it'll, I, can, I can see it in it 3D. It might help you, Ron. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Well, obviously, for me, uh, having an affiliation with the Masters like I do, my father having won in 48 and having Coach Tiger and Phil when they won, uh, the Masters is a special place for all of us Harmons. And Nick Watney got married. Yeah. Right after he he was on the show, he hung up and uh, he he took the vows. It's unbelievable what this what the the effect that we have on people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, we do have an effect on people. <laughs> we do. Kind of yeah. like Columbo's raincoat, right? And it <laughs> repels everything but the rain. No, I'm just kidding. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, you say things you don't know what it means. I, I just know, thought I'd throw that out But there. I do it with more rhythm. Oh. And, folks, oh. I have to well, put up a with these guys. <laughs> wow, we're getting all this inside yeah. stuff about uh, yeah. relationships yeah. and everything. Now you know about yeah. Elon, and yeah. you know about the new woman in his yeah. life. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all, <laughs> you know, I don't hey, have her name. All I, I know it. about is yeah. Marty Fleckman. <laughs> Ah, golf ain't easy, you know. Whenever I play, I can never get on the green like other guys, you know. A guy hits a hybrid. Another guy hits a wedge. The ball rolls on the green. Not with me. I'm telling you, I hit every club I ever had. I always end up on the fringe. Ha oh, I get no respect. No respect at all. Well, that makes it, you know, the thing that gets me about it, Lee, is that it's just amazing that uh, you played you pl your whole career, but especially under un under tremendous pressure. You know, I mean, there were death threats. Let's you know lay it out the way it was, and yet you were able to to, to play the game. You know, we I can go out on a Saturday afternoon <laughs> with with a friend, well, and I feel pressure. Sure. But well, you know, you have to ask the you have to trust in in the Almighty and ask Him to uh, you know to guide you in the right direction. But the thing that uh, 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 that was so frightening was the fact that almost any golf tournament that I led or that I had a chance on winning, uh, there were always uh, telephone calls of death threats or letters or notes or something that, that and then I had to have uh, uh, policemen in almost every town uh, that would that would follow that would uh, go about with me to uh, uh, just as a precautionary measure to uh, to protect me. I'll never forget the I'll never forget the incident. Right after the assassination of Dr. King, uh, I led the Memphis uh, the Memphis tournament, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, after Saturday's round, uh, uh, which I did not which I did not know, but uh, God bless his soul, Jack Tuthill, who was then tournament supervisor, came to me and said, "Lee, uh, we would like for you to change hotels uh, uh, because we have received uh, uh, some notification that your life is that they're going to be making an attempt on your life." So. I changed that, and then the next day I, I played that arm guards with the, the three deep around me. So yeah. it was uh, pretty frightening. Regarded as one of the finest luxury resorts in the world, the renowned Greenbrier, located in historic White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, offers four 18-hole championship golf courses. The Greenbrier is host to the Greenbrier Classic, a PGA Tour FedEx event. 
If you're looking to improve your game, America's Resort offers the Greenbrier Golf Academy, providing the ultimate in golf instruction. Visit the Greenbrier online at www.greenbrier.com or call toll-free 1-800-453-4858. Make America's Resort your destination. But I would love to get her out and get her a little club where she can start... Uh... Smacking around a golf ball soon. <laughs> That's great. It, it, what two years old? That's amazing. But it, you know, she'll probably she'll probably with your guidance uh, develop into a terrific player. You know, it's funny right now what Morgan does. Um, she knows to hold a club. Now, granted, the club is a foot and a half taller than she is. Um, she thinks that throwing golf balls and rolling them is the greatest thing ever. So that's her uh, <laughs> that's her golf experience right now is throwing golf balls. But. Um, She's learning how to kick them right now as well. So well, that's, that's as far as we've gotten, <laughs> but I'm definitely uh, looking forward to this summer and cutting off a club for her and letting her try and smack it around a little bit. Good. Yeah, well, you, you could cut down a little putter and get her going putting on the greens with Mama. That would be fun. I, you know what? That would be very cool um, if I could get her on the greens. Unfortunately, you know how 23, 24 months old are. She's, she'll take a chunk out of the green, and then I'll feel bad. But, uh, <laughs> no, I would definitely am. Hello everyone, Howard Cosell back in the booth to remind you, you're tuned to On the Fringe, an elocutionary display of golf information. Now, let's get back to the live action. All right, back here on the fringe with yours truly, the G-Man, Vic Wilk and Mike Preisler. So we're all here <laughs> and we're rocking and rolling. Thanks for hanging in there with us. A couple technical problems, but uh, we're professionals, so you know we're going to freak out. No, we'll get through this thing. Uh, we're here with uh, Tom O'Claire, tourplayers.com, and Inside the Ropes, the guy that gives us all the inside information. He could have three majors by now, uh, when you consider how he opened up at the British Open last year. But he's got his one, and I think that one's going to go a long way. I'm not, you know, I think he's got all the talent in the world. I think he probably is the next great player. But I'm not going to predict that he's going to break Jack Nicklaus's records or anything else. I'm going to give him a chance to enjoy this one, <laughs> and let's see what he can do from here. Yeah, I know. Pa uh, Padraig Harrington kind of put the pressure on him. <laughs> and I, I think Rory was kind of embarrassed by it. I mean, I, I know Padraig didn't mean anything by it. He admires him. But, uh, yeah, that, that's putting a bit a bit much on a, on a what, 23-year-old uh, player, you know. Yeah, he just turned 22. Two. 22. Yeah, All right, back here on the fringe, Ron Gerard, the G-Man, yours truly with you, along with the master Vic Wilk and Mike Preisler. And uh, we promised you uh, at the top of the show we were going to have Butch Harmon, and uh, I was ready to leave the building here a few minutes ago, but uh, we have him. He's with us. How are you, Butch? I'm very good, guys. Happy to be with you. Well, it's nice to have you here. We come, I'm referring to you as Lord of the Swings. Because you've been that, you've been doing this for so long, you're you're, you're the master, uh, uh, you know, and uh, we we really appreciate. I know your time is uh, valuable, and we appreciate you taking some time and uh, joining us after one of the more memorable U.S. Opens. You're always with us at uh, after uh, one of the uh, major tournaments, and here we are with the U.S. Open. And uh, did anything about that surprise you? The way uh, Rory kind of dominated that uh, tournament. I don't think it surprised me how well Roy McIlroy played. I think it surprised me that he ran off and left the field and won by eight shots. Uh, the golf course obviously was softer than the USGA would have liked. That's why the balls were holding on the greens and the scores were a little low at times. But in reality, I mean, he lapped the field. He played so well. Yeah, Butch, don't you think it's uh, tougher to run away from a field when the conditions are, so to speak, easy rather than difficult? Without a doubt, and especially on a field like the, the U.S. Open, which has every great player in the world there. I mean, it was unbelievable what he did, and he made it look easy. Uh, if you watched it, he drove the ball beautifully. His iron play was well. He never really got himself in trouble. Uh, when he did, he just kind of took his medicine and went about his way, and he putted beautifully. He did everything he had to do, and no one was able to put any pressure on him. He got out front, and he just stayed there. Yeah, I, you know, in the swing uh, reminded me that the flow of that golf swing was just flawless all week, and some of the swings he made, like uh, that uh, iron 
you know, in the par five of the second day, just was uh, the balance and grace of it. It was just, uh, it, it's a swing to, to behold. Well, you know, yeah, I think he learned a lot from uh, the Masters. Uh, a lot of people will remember the Masters debacle, and they'll forget that last year at the British Open he also had the lead in shot 80. Uh, so I think he learned from both of those uh, experiences. I think he prepared well. He went to congressional uh, before the tournament, didn't have to do much the week of the tournament, knew he was playing well, and went in there with a lot of confidence. And, and the big key was he got off to a good start. He was in the high-profile group. He was playing with uh, Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson the first two days in front of the most people that anybody would have the first two days, and he was the star that shined among those three. Thanks for logging on to On the Fringe. Join Vic, Mike, and yours truly, the G-Man, every week where we offer you the latest and up-to-date golf news, interviews with newsmakers, and playing instruction. Remember, keep it on the fairway and don't make me look for you on the fringe.